Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today, I'm reviewing the most powerful, most powerful laptop I've ever reviewed in my life. This is the Razer Blade Pro 17 inch, not 16 inches, 17 inches. This isn't a laptop. This is a laptop. It's got the 10th generation Intel CPU. It's got a full fat RTX 2080 Super GPU. Powerful GPU and it's 17 inches. Just look how big it is. It still manages to run Windows. That's right, Max. With your arms, no Windows compatibility is lost. You still get Windows here. And first up, I'm gonna show you the power of the CPU. Sinbench, show me how good it is. 2,526. Okay, it's not the most impressive score I've seen in my life. Still good for a laptop, but where impressiveness comes into play is the GPU. I'm talking about the RTX 28 Super. I'm gonna jump in to Bitcoin mining. I'm serious about this one. Look at this. Look how much money it's making me a day while I've had this unit on loan from Razer. That's right, almost 70 cents a day, and that's net profit. That's including the amount of power it's using for electricity. When I unleash the CPU and GPU together, it can burn up. It can get me $1.40 a day, of course, with the CPU being so inefficient that uh, ends up costing me money. So I just recommend if you are mining, don't do it because it will burn up your GPU. But 70 cents a day doing nothing. Thank you, Razer, for the lone laptop. And this is the charging brick. It is a big boy. So what makes this laptop so powerful is that it has a 230 watt charger. 230 watts of power. This is some serious juice coming out of this beast. Compared to the MacBook Pro, 97 watts. This, this guy is a power machine, power hungry machine. But even though it's a power hungry machine, it still mines almost double the same amount as I can get on my Mac. This is what mining on the MacBook Pro looks like. I'm getting 0.36 AUD a day, which is at half the speed of the Razer. Good stuff. Next up, I wanna show you some of the controls that you get in this system. Look at this dashboard, you go inside, system. You can customize the lighting, I can make it all bright. Look at that, I got a nice little fire pattern on my keyboard, pretty, pretty good performance. I usually set it to balance because it seems to work the best. So check this out regarding fan noise. On auto mode, while I'm fully on, full fat compiling shaders in Unreal Engine, something that makes my MacBook Pro go crazy, crazy. Right now, it's going noise levels wise. You got to see it to believe it. 41.3 dB. This is auto settings. This is the recommended settings from Razer themselves, compiling shaders, and it's quiet. Pretty good, but you can go into custom mode and then specify how powerful you want the CPU and GPU to operate. The only negative I say about those controls is you don't get controls of the fans anymore. Whereas on balance mode, you can set it to manual and actually choose if you want high fan mode, medium fan mode, or even low fan mode, and it will adequately provide enough power to suit that use case. So I do love the features that they're giving with the Razer system. And now let's jump into emulation. Emulation is a hot topic right now because obviously a certain company has moved to ARM and they have to emulate everything for Intel CPUs. Well, look at it right here. I'm using an Xbox emulator, Xbox 360, the original one, and Frame rate wise, 30 frames a second playing red depth. Okay, I'll drop down a bit to 22 frames a second as it's buffering the scene, but 30 frames a second almost while I'm playing this Xbox 360 emulated game live. As you can see, look, I'm running around doing all this cool stuff. It works pretty well. It works almost twice as fast as it does on my ninth generation Intel MacBook Pro. Traditional gaming in epic settings right here, maximum frame rates. I'm getting a smooth 77 frames a second, almost 80 frames a second. Now this screen does actually go to 300 Hertz. I challenge why you need 300 Hertz. I'd probably opt for the 4K version of the laptop. I'm right now using the 1080p version. The quality is good. I mean, 17 inches, you do maybe notice that it's not the retina beautiful kind of like Christmas that you kind of expect, but the frame rates are very, very nice. Yeah, I'd probably opt for the 4K version if I was buying this fresh because I'm not gonna get, you know, 300 frames a second in this kind of games I play. Maybe you League of Legends out there might argue and differ, I want 1080p, but this GPU, I mean, yeah, it deserves 4K. Get the 4K edition. I'm gonna lower it down to 
the lowest I can go, which is medium settings. And still in medium settings, I'm getting 80 frames a second. So epic settings or medium settings, I don't think 300 hertz is worth it. Other stuff I like about this laptop is that it's port city. You got USB A, A, C. Okay, the power supply is a bit proprietary. You can't just plug in USB C, that's a negative. But you got Ethernet there, two and a half. On the right side, you also got USB A, HDMI, you got an SD card, it is port city, it is a good, good laptop for ports. Size wise, it feels kind of nice and big and chunky and fully ornamented. If I compare it with my current baby tiny laptop, okay, there is an extra inch to be played around with right there. You can see a big inch difference, but weight wise, oh, this feels light actually. My current laptop feels light, this new one. It's, it is a bit heavier, but you kind of get used to it. The sound also you get out of the laptop isn't, I mean, it's great for a laptop. It gets really loud for a laptop, but there isn't that bass that there is in other laptops, you know, the MacBooks of this world. Game development wise, look at it right here. This is the Unreal Engine. It's compiling 18,000 shaders and the fans, and you gotta hear it, it's, it's, it's not off, it's quiet. But it's not like, it's not crazy like, you know, the Apple MacBooks that come out nowadays. So it's very, very good. It's doing it really quickly, compressing animations. And I'm getting a nice 10 frames a second during this compilation process. 10 to 20 frames a second. Look at it right there. So there you have it. That's the Razer Blade Pro 17 inch. Full fat, amazing GPU, 10th generation CPU. I gotta say, are you big enough to handle one of these? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure you check out the in-depth development tools review of this laptop, link in the description below. And of course, hope you guys enjoyed the show. This isn't a laptop, this is a laptop.